Good morning. Good morning. Peace of the Lord be with you all as we gather to worship today. Uh, I want you to think about uh, this question as we worship. Um, what is the most rewarding work that you've ever done? The most rewarding work that you've ever done. And, and I want you to think about it, but not in terms of what you were paid. Not in terms of what you were paid. So don't think, well, oh, this is the highest paying job, therefore that was the most rewarding. No. What is the most rewarding work that you've ever done? And as you think about that, we're going to hear about the difference between being rewarded financially and being rewarded. And that's what we hear and talk about in our Old Testament reading today. So before we get underway, let's take a moment, greet each other. Stand and do that. Welcome those around you. Wish each other peace of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good job today. Hey, Rob, how are you? Good. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Sierra. Still waking up? Good morning again, Randy. Good morning. I'll give you a hug now. How are you, Kathy? <laughs> sure. <laughs> So as we worship this morning, our opening hymn today is God Himself is Present. Let us stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Let's pause for a moment, reflect on God's word, and examine our hearts and minds, and confess our sins to our Father in heaven, personally and individually.
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll join in reading our intro at responsibly half verse by half verse, and join together in the glory be to the Father, the Son Version. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my heart. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. is near the, to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. We join in the Kyrie. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray together the collect of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, your divine wisdom sets in order all things in heaven and on earth. Put away from us all things hurtful and give us those things that are beneficial for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the scripture readings.
The Old Testament reading for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost is from Ecclesiastes chapter 5. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of the laborer, whether he eats little or much, but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There was a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his hurt, and those riches were lost in a bad venture. And he is father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is there to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all his days he eats in darkness, in much vexation and sickness and anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life, because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The epistle this morning is from Hebrews chapter 4. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest. As he has said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this passage he said, They shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience, again he appoints a certain day, today, saying through David so long afterward, in the words already quoted, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if, jo for if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. And let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel, and we join in singing the Alleluia verse. Alleluia. 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 The Gospel is, according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. To thee, o Lord. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God. For all things are possible with God. 
Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And let's join together and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and we'll join in singing hymn number 784, verses 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message today is our Old Testament reading, and I'll read just a portion of that one more time. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink 
and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun, the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life, because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. This is our text. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we pray by your Spirit's power, open our minds, our ears, our hearts, and mold and shape us with your word. Help us to appreciate the opportunity to work the opportunity to serve others, the opportunity to find satisfaction in what you give us to do. And help us, above all, to have the priorities you want us to have. Not in the end result, a paycheck, or money in the bank, but to find joy in what you provide, joy in what you give, and contentment and all that we receive from your hand. In your name, amen. So, did you come up with it? What is the most rewarding work that you have ever done? Linda. Um, I did videos for people on the process of buying their houses. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Ron? I think my most satisfying time were the uh, days, nights, weekends that I was working on this and stuff. Okay, all right. Brenda? When I served in the Upper Midwest for shelters, the people are so gracious. Dina? Okay, so if you notice what we heard was a lot of not what was rewarding for me financially, not what was rewarding for me uh, materially, but what was rewarding for me in what way? Yeah, rewarding for those who were receiving and because they were receiving and they're being blessed, I too was rewarded. I was rewarded because I was able to see the benefit of what I was doing. Uh, and I really want you to, to dwell on that um, as we listen to God's word in Ecclesiastes today. Solomon's writing this as an older man, and as he's writing this as an older man, he can step back with perspective and all the wisdom that God provided him and, and see what was the most meaningful, what was the most important. And uh, I want to state this as uh, a disclaimer. You will hear the word money in this sermon. This is not a money sermon. Okay? Just because the word money is used doesn't have to do with what you might normally call a money sermon. Oh, great, they're begging for money. Not at all. Okay? Because if that's all you're thinking... You're missing the whole point. Because what we need to hear in this passage of Scripture is what God is calling us to dwell on as far as priorities are concerned. What are our real priorities? What should be the most meaningful things to us? The most important pursuits in our life? What should those be? That's what God is calling us to that's what God is speaking through Solomon in Ecclesiastes. So if you bring up the scripture reading, notice what it says here. Verse 10, he who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This, is all, this also is vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them. And what advantage has their owner but to see them with his eyes? You see, there's a lot of people who live their lives uh, about what will make me the most money. And that's 
unfortunate because when we live our lives that that's the end all be all of existence, then what we hear from Solomon, what God is saying through Solomon, is that person is never going to find contentment. Notice what it says. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money. So put up that first picture. You know, some of us are, are only thinking, some people are only thinking, I want to see my money grow like a snowball on a cliff. I want it to see it roll, grow, and become huge. But what is the most important thing, really? Because really what happens to this? You know, one of the things that happens with the accumulation of money is, one, worrying about keeping it all, and then two, once we learn that, oh, we can spend this and enjoy some of the luxuries in life, then those luxuries come with a price. Right? So going back to the scripture reading, notice what it says in verse 11. It says, when goods increase, they increase who eat them. Winners of the lottery, how many phone calls from friends, neighbors, acquaintances come to them, say, oh, I heard you won the lottery. Oh, by the way, could you help me out with, right? You've ever watched one of those shows on cable that talk about bankrupt lottery winners, and it's because they're not sure and they're taken advantage of because all of a sudden there's all kinds of hands out and all kinds of beggars. Even people that are wealthy. Okay, I buy a big mansion, now I need, well, I need a maid to clean it, I need a butler to take care of me, I need a gardener, and I need a cook, and quickly you're putting out more than that's coming in. And I want you to hear all that to see that sometimes wealth is not all sunshine and roses. Sometimes wealth is more trouble than it's worth, and this is coming from probably one of the richest men that ever lived. Because that's what Solomon was. As we hear that, go on to verse 12, listen to what he says next. What was really satisfying? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much. For the full stomach of the rich man will not let him sleep. After you put in a long, hard day of rewarding work, how well do you sleep? Right? Even if it's just working out in the yard and accomplishing various tasks that you know you have to accomplish, once they're all done, what does your mind do? Your mind relaxes, and when your mind relaxes, then your body is able to relax. However, you go out, eat a big meal of all kinds of rich food, what do you do in bed? Uh, uh. Right? And, and that's the way it is. And, and what God is, is speaking through Solomon is, what gives us the most contentment is what brings us satisfaction, contentment in life, not by what it gains us physically, financially, materially, but what it gains us to dwell on in our soul, to dwell on in our heart. The opportunity to love and care for those around us. Verse 13, there's a grievous evil that I've seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his hurt. Next slide. And those riches were lost at a bad venture. And his father, he's a father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. See, a quickly earned is quickly lost. And when it's all that matters, how much grief and ill will is created over something that isn't that important to begin with. And I say it's not that important to begin with because of what he says next. Verse 15. And he came from his mother's womb, and he shall go again, naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry in away his hand. When I was in high school, I liked to uh, perform in uh, musicals and plays and, 
and, and dramas that our high school would put on. And so uh, when I was a junior in high school in that spring, we put on a play that was called, Ben, if you would, You Can't Take It With You. And this is from uh, a movie that was put out in 1938, won uh, the Oscar for Best Picture that year, and uh, the gentleman hugging the lady at the top, you might know as Jimmy Stewart. And, and uh, so it was a very popular movie. And kind of the plot of the whole thing is, you see the uh, gentleman at the bottom uh, on Jimmy Stewart's side, um, he had a big mansion, but it was filled with all kinds of different people. And he was kind of giving his money away, basically, to anyone who asked. So that was kind of the title character. And the thing that he said was, well, you can't take it with you. And that's really the point. This was later on Broadway, and it was performed by Rose Byrne and James Earl Jones. Uh, I just wanted to share that with you, that we might have that sense of that very truth. When we leave this world, it's not like we can pack a great big suitcase and take it along. Right. Because what God uses gold for in heaven is pavement. And, and the point that we need to see is it's not something that we can take with us. Therefore, it's not a pursuit that needs to overwhelm us. It's not a pursuit that needs to overwhelm us because it doesn't last. It doesn't last forever. So what should be the pursuits that really matter to us? What should be the pursuits that are really important? You know, when it comes to, to wealth, all too often what happens with wealth is it becomes an idol. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, well, I think it's a really good idea to review the first commandment. The first commandment, join with me. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. So when Jesus talks in our gospel reading why it's so difficult for uh, a wealthy person to enter the kingdom of God, what's the reason? Because the wealth has become that person's God. And because the wealth has become that person's God, that's all that matters, and they think they have everything they need. Rather than recognizing they still need to rely and trust and depend on God and a God alone above all things. So what should our pursuit be? Not the accumulation of wealth, not the accumulation of financial wherewithal, but something much more lasting. There's a gentleman in my first congregation, I'll never forget him say these words to me. He said, Pastor, you're not truly secure until you're financially secure. And I shook my head. And I said, Elmer, you're missing the point. And the problem is, is that we all have one pursuit that we should have in common that's above everything else. And that's for something that doesn't fade away, can't be stolen, can't be swindled, can't be lost. That's the gift that only God can give. And that's the real point. So when we look at the cross, we see that Jesus begins here with his work to bring us true and lasting contentment. Because what takes it away in this world is sin and the consequences of sin. And so Jesus, through his cross, starts chipping away at that. I want to remove your pain. I want to remove your suffering. I want to remove your guilt. I want to remove your shame. I want to remove your grief. I want to remove your worry. And all of that Jesus begins to do with his cross. 
Because all of that he takes on the cross with him. And all of that he dies on the cross with and buries with him himself in the tomb. All of that he lays waste for us. To remove it from us and to start us on the journey toward joy. That's where he wants us. That journey toward joy for everlasting life. So Jesus starts there. Three days later, he continues. Three days later, he... Oh my goodness. Let's try that again. Three days later, he... Awesome. That is what gives us hope. That is what gives us eternal joy. That's what gives us a certainty of something that can never be taken away. Something that lasts forever. Filled with joy, filled with peace, filled with comfort in a way that is beyond this world. And only God can give. That's what he gives. That's the best joy of all. And is that the best joy of all, pursuit of knowing him and loving him and finding more about him is, should be above every pursuit. Just this uh, week, I was uh, flipping channels, and Wesley and I had watched one show, and, and I flipped channels after that one was over, and uh, we turned and found on the Up channel on cable the movie Overcomer. How many of you have ever seen this? Anybody? Okay, if you haven't, oh, you've seen it, Sandy? If you haven't seen this, it's an awesome movie, okay? Very good. Wesley really liked it because he was a cross-country runner, but there was more, far more to it than that. And this girl who had kind of a, a terrible childhood, a terrible upbringing, comes to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then that becomes her only pursuit. And that's what drives her to succeed in other things. And, and I wanted to share that with you. And as you hear that, recognize that's where our true fulfillment and everything else in life can come from. Our relationship with God, our relationship with Jesus Christ drives us to give him glory in everything we do in caring for others and in loving those around us and in serving those around us. That becomes the more important pursuit then. Because when we listen to this passage of Scripture, go back to the Old Testament reading, Ben, if you want to bring up starting at verse 18, or 16, excuse me. Notice what he says is a grievous evil. Go back to 15 again. So we can't take any of this with us. The grievous evil is really one word. The grievous evil is what? Five-letter word starts with a D. Death. And it's something we all face. Each and every one of us face death. You know, if we learn nothing from the pandemic, everybody fears it in one way or another. Hopefully not to the point where it disables you with fear. But the point is, it's going to come to each and every one of us, some sooner, some later. But the fact is, that most grievous evil is what Jesus came to destroy. Jesus came to overcome. And so as we listen, we hear the next words at 16. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is there for him who toils after the wind? Moreover, all the days of his life, uh, he eats in darkness and much vexation, sickness and anger. That's what earthly existence is. And if God's not in it, 18. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun a few days of his life. And I'm going to tell you about being a pastor. There are certain things that I find uh, a great deal of fulfillment in being a pastor, and there's a lot of things that I find absolutely no fulfillment in at all. Some of my pastor friends, my best friend, uh, Pastor Klein down in Greenville, we've joked about this. They don't pay us to preach and teach. They don't pay us to see the shut-ins. They pay us to go to long, late-night meetings. (laughs) 
because nobody wants to do that. I want you to hear what I find the most fulfillment in. I find the most fulfillment in visiting our shut-ins, where I can talk with them one-on-one, where I can bring the lonely ones a little bit of companionship and comfort for the few minutes that I'm with them, that they can hear the word and receive the sacrament. I find a great deal of fulfillment in that. I find a great deal of fulfillment in being together with members in a fellowship type activity. That's why I thought it was so important that we had that church picnic not too long ago. That's why I thought it was so important that we had Booya. Booya was a great joy. It was a great joy because I could come in, chop vegetables, chat and joke with members, and not have to really think, but just enjoy. To get together on early Saturday morning and feed the crew and have an enjoyment together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Incredibly fulfilling. To after everything was done, to go out and have a snack and a drink and just to relax with them. Incredibly fulfilling. Because it gave us time to be together and enjoy the toil that we did together. And I think it's really important that we recognize that as a congregation. That's where our fulfillment comes from. When Jesus says, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am with them. Do you think he was serious about that? Absolutely. So whether we're cooking booyah or having a, a meal or doing something else together? Jesus with us? Absolutely. Jesus is with us there just as much as he is with us in our baptism, in his word, and in Holy Communion. He is there with us. That's why I started our service with God himself is present. Present because he wants to be with us in that way. Present because he wants to enjoy our time together with us. Present because that brings him fulfillment and comfort and that's what he wants us to feel not in the things the world gives but in the good that his presence provides the presence of serving of loving and caring not for what's in it for me but for what we can share together as brothers and sisters in Christ share together as the family of God. Our most important pursuits have nothing to do with dollar signs. Our most important pursuits have everything to do with the presence of God and brothers and sisters in Christ and our opportunity to care for each other. In Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. As our gifts are brought forward, uh, the handbells will play for us. And so remain seated for a few moments.
Let us stand for prayer. Father, we come before your throne thanking and praising you for the gift that you give to us to bring us eternal comfort, eternal joy, and eternal contentment. It's not the things of this world that give us true contentment, but what in this world brings us contentment is the gift of others, the gift of being able to find satisfaction in our labor for you and our labor with each other for the good of others. Help us to be truly content with what truly matters. And help us to be truly content in what lies ahead, that which lasts forever, that which cannot fade away. Help us, we pray. Help us to learn those true and important priorities and find joy in the gift of salvation and find joy in the gift of each other serving you. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those who are in physical need. We pray especially for um, Pam Shudak recovering from uh, COVID-19, as is Sophia Klatt. We also pray for uh, those undergoing treatment, for Al Abel, Cleo Bellin, Lincoln Candidate, Katie Klopek, Sharon Eichmann, Kim Fry, Cindy Heike, Derek Kosmicki, Tiana Lang, Gail Maton, Mary Melnick, Jennifer Nearing, Roger Nowak, Jean Palomino, Jerry Schwan, Linda Whipperforth, and John Wirch. We also pray for those who are recovering. We pray especially for Klaus Becker, Carol Bogatka, Bruce Burt, Beth Corey, Tom Fritch, Jill Kern, Susan Kupski, Jennifer Michael, Kathy Miller, Chuck Rentmeester, Dwayne Wardeke, and Barry Bramer, who was just released from the hospital. We also pray for those who are ongoing health problems, for Neil Anderson, Bob Barrett, Margie Berglund, Luis Christopoulos, Bonnie Doby, David Doby, Tom Dufek, Ed Forrell, Luann Gersmel, Becky um, Halter Felderhyde, uh, Vi Howard, Ron Howard, Sue Keenitz, Tom, um, Tom Mead, Laura Lee, Vicki Peterson, Marshall and Sheila Piotter, Mary Perlot, Marion Smaling, Phyllis Smeester, LaDonna Trotz, Bill Wagner, and Lori Zellner. Provide for them, O Lord, if it is your will. Comfort them and strengthen them with your very presence and sustain them with hope in you, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would comfort those who mourn. We pray especially for the family and friends of Carol Lash, mother of Doug Lash, who went to her eternal rest this last week. We also pray for the family and friends of Mark Montoya, the um, friend of Brittany and Chuck Hyde, who went to his eternal rest this last week. Remind those who mourn that you have conquered death by your resurrection. And because of your resurrection, we have the truest hope and the greatest joy, joy that awaits us in uh, a celebration that never ends, in a wedding feast that lasts forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those who are uh, persecuted for their faith. Strengthen them to stand firm no matter what threats they face. We pray for victims of natural disaster. Heal the hurting, comfort the mourning, and provide for all the needs of those who suffered so much. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all Christian ministries around the world, especially we pray for Elliot and Serena Derricks working in Cameroon, home on a break. We also pray for those who um, are our educators, our school ministries, Trinity Lutheran School and NEW Lutheran High School, and all our sister congregations and their ministries here in Green Bay, throughout Wisconsin, and around the world. Bless us all, Lord, with the joy that we receive from the power of your word and the contentment we find in the ministry of the gospel. Strengthen us that we might help bring that joy and contentment to others. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who serve in our armed forces, especially Christian Altergott, Paige Bogner, Tess and Sean LaRue, Roy McDonough, Garrett Moen, Maggie Knoll, and Nathan Schrader. Sustain and strengthen them to carry out their duties courageously 
and bring them home in peace again soon, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray for our president, our governor, and all in positions of authority. Guide these men and women to be honorable and trustworthy, to turn away from selfish political ideas and turn back to your will, your way. Help them to recognize that it is your authority and that they must yield to it, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, us in your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the Christ on the night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you this do in remembrance of me and after the same manner also he took the cup and after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we come forward for distribution.
join in singing the Nunc Dimittis. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Bless we the Lord. Be the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated as we sing hymn number 917, verses 1, 2, and 4. Pause for a moment of silent prayer. Lord, in your mercy,
we share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Just a couple of reminders. Uh, first reminder. Yes, what? Sunday school today. We, we should have gone down at 10. So, um, oops. <laughs> so, uh, if you're still here, go to Sunday school. Uh, also, a reminder that uh, we have uh, Bible class, and uh, that will be in the meeting room upstairs. And also a reminder that uh, Trunk or Treat is just two weeks away, and we need people to sign up for that. And Mary, what did you have to say? Well, not throw it, but hand it to them. <laughs> we don't want to injure the kids with candy. Um, um, so yeah, we, the signs are out, so we're committed, so we're in this. So I encourage you, if you can, uh, to decorate a car and uh, come and it's always a lot of fun. Uh, also a uh, reminder that uh, the Fellowship Club is gonna be hosting uh, a uh, get together to watch the Thursday night Packers game on the uh, 28th of October. They're gonna gather over at the bar on Home Gun Way, and so you can come, uh, enjoy watching it together, spend a little time in fellowship, you know, just uh, to enjoy yourselves uh, together. And then they've got another one that will be here, a tailgate type thing, and I believe that one's on the 7th? I don't know. When's that one? 21st. Thank you, 21st. 21st of November. That one will be here on campus. Ben or Jim? I'm first. Okay. Ben, then Jim. <laughs> so I uh, just wanted to give a quick update. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who came down for the Swine and Dine dinner uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, it was just a huge success, uh, and the, the results of that were amazing. From that night, from all the ticket sales, raised over four grand that's going to be going into the accounts to help continue to send kids to uh, college and high school and, and Lutheran education here. And so it's just a, a massive, uh, a very big thank you to all of us who planned it, to all of you who showed up. Uh, for helping us do that. We really appreciate it. It's going to be wonderful, and it's, it's so great to see the enthusiasm to, for that ministry outreach that, that we do here to keep sending that next generation uh, onto those Christian schools. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody. Appreciate it. So uh, Ben and Jim, we're announcing the Ben and Jim Ice Cream Company starting. Oh, yeah, Christmas. there you go. I like it. I like it. <laughs> so uh, this past July pastor reached 31 years in the ministry and a little over half of that right here at Redeemer and so October is des designated as pastor appreciation month so we want to recognize that and pastor uh, we appreciate you being here we want to recognize you and your service and appreciate uh, sharing God's word with us every week truthfully and not wavering and so thank you very much and uh, also for the long, late night, late hour meetings, you know. <laughs> so. As a way of recognizing this, we, or not we, uh, there, we have two groups in the back who have cake today for us. Uh, the Redeemer Women's Christian Service and Mission and mis Ministry Groups. So again, uh, Pastor, thank you very much, and we appreciate your sharing God's word with us here in your service. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you all. I truly appreciate it. <laughs> but I, I want to take time to recognize having the, the handbell choir down here and being able to watch them play. Uh, what a blessing. So let's uh, thank the handbell choir too.
Peace of the Lord go with you all. Have a blessed day in Jesus. Thanks, Jeff. Hey, Sandy. Great to see you. Okay, take care, Rob. Hey, Mike. Great to see you. Good, Frank. Thanks. Jessica. Hey, Jory. Good to see you, Don. Thanks.